interesting. Well, you have these lovely little guys here. Mm -hmm. Iris zoom and focus. Mm -hmm. These right over here, I have run stop controls. So I do have an actual cable to control run stop. So the DP doesn't even have to press record. I press it for him remotely. It's pretty simple. I just press this lovely button here, camera, and it'll run. It's very, very nice because you will always know without somebody saying rolling, when you hear the beep of the camera, that we're rolling. My actual remote controls focus and iris. So I'm able to do both of those if needed. With every camera, depending on what era they came from and what era the wireless follow focus came from, um, that depends on if you can use them or not. So mine is a Preston MDR1, but it's a Fizz 2, so I have control over two channels if I need to have control over two channels. But with this camera, you can actually tap into here with wireless follow focus, and you don't have to run an MDR. That's the great thing about a lot of Alexas. They have what's called a WCU4 with the Mini and the Amira. You don't have to have, and they have a little tiny MDR. You don't have to have that anymore. You just plug right in and boom. You don't have to add a clunker like this onto your camera, which, sorry guys, we'll be adding this one today. I find that, because Preston motors are pretty strong and powerful, um, and some lenses are stiff, some are very like loosey-goosey. Whenever I mount on top, um, I don't have to worry about if I have to push the matte box back further. For instance, I can just hang on top no worries or cares in the world. And it helps gravity, it seems to help a lot. What has happened is this lens, uh, Pacific set of anamorphics, whenever I pull focus, you can see, look how the lens goes out, then goes back in. Well, whenever I calibrate a lens, because I'm setting my focus marks on here, with it ballooning out like that and coming back in, a fatter gear will actually help me be able to ride the full ring of it. So mine's a medium size one. And if I have tiny little teeth gears, I use a really thin one. But with this guy, I wanna have a fat gear to be able to ride this thing the full way. This is where prepping at a rental house comes in handy because I can ask our lovely gentleman over there, hey, can I have a thicker gear for my motor? With a lot of lenses, especially with anamorphics, they don't have close focus that's very awesome a lot of times. Basically with a diopter, it allows me as the focus puller and the DP who's setting up the frame to get closer in, because um, a lot of anamorphics, it's like three and a half, four feet focus minimums. If you're trying to get a nice close up, you can't get close enough. And so you have different diopters that help you get closer and closer and closer. But the difference is if you want me to throw focus far away again, I can't do it unless it's what's called a split diopter, where I can keep the really close object super in focus in one area and then still throw my focus at its natural distance, which might be 15 feet away, right to that person or object that's 15 feet away. The wireless follow focus that I own um, enables me to, if I'm at something that's at close focus, say they're four feet away from me, but then they want me to throw 200 feet away all of a sudden. Why would you just use a speed crank normally with a manual follow focus? And you're turning three, maybe even four times to get to that spot. Whereas with a Preston, it helps us to be able to go from that close object as quickly as they need us to, flip, boom, right to that 200 feet away. And with anamorphics, you see them breathe, which is really, really interesting. So you actually get to see my focus pull happen more so on the screen, which kind of makes me feel cool, you know, as a first AC. You get to see me actually doing what I do, because my parents don't know what I do still.